About what it was a few weeks ago. You know, I think today is there's evidence of uh, immaturity at times when you're in these live situations where we're moving the football and there's rapid fire plays and the play clock is on and there's uh, live reactions and adjustments in real time. And because of that, you know, we're, we're going to have to be patient with 87 and 9. Um, but I tell you what, ever since the Saints practice, the first one, Sammy has been a different player. And he's been super reliable. And every practice made a bunch of plays. Today he had a bunch of plays again. I thought Kabi in the last eight days or so has practiced really, really well. And he had another good practice today. And he caught a touchdown in the, to end the two-minute drive for us on a deep corner route. So I'm really happy with those two guys, especially. And look, he took the issue public initially, so don't be surprised if he's asked publicly about it and he gave an answer and he's trying to coax these guys along. Yeah, that's right. I still I still believe if he'd been there for the offseason program, they would have been a little less freaked out. You and I agree on that. Right. When it was time for training camp to get started, they would have worked out some of that stuff. They would have gotten maybe to a level of comfort, not complete comfort, but less discomfort than they would have had in training camp trying to impress Aaron Rodgers. And here we are. Week and a half away from the start of the season. Was it 38 to 3 last year in Jacksonville I when the Saints so. kicked the crap out of them? Right. Now, two years ago, they opened the season by going to Minnesota and splattering the Vikings, but that was in a fan free environment. Yes. With a couple of rookie corners starting for the Vikings. It'll be different this year when the Packers go back to Minnesota to start the season. Be a little bit louder and a little bit more hostile than it was. And you're going to have some unproven players out there who are expected to step up in their NFL regular season debuts. And Aaron Rodgers applying a little more, a little more public heat as he tries to nudge this process forward. Yeah, he's going to keep the pressure on. I'm sure. I don't think this will be the last time we'll hear him address it. He just he's trying to get them ready for prime time, and prime time's not right now. Prime times, middle of the season, last half of the season, playoffs. That's where he's got. He knows it's there's time here. He's going to lean on Randall Cobb and Sammy Watkins. I think early on, you know, and then you know, you make the point. Yeah, it's going to be a tough environment, especially for young receivers. There's no questions. Let alone, it's new defensive scheme, first time defensive coordinator. You know, out there in in in, in Minnesota, who what are we gonna get? We don't know exactly how he's gonna play. So I would think we see a heavy dose of Sammy Watkins and Randall Cobb. And right now, Rodgers would rather than deal with talent and explosiveness, he just wants to make sure, hey, I know where you are. You're in the right spot. And if I'm blinded by the pass rush or whatever, as long as you're in the right spot, it doesn't matter. I'll throw an Aaron Rodgers laser and we'll I'll still hit it. As long as you're there. That's what he's relied on. My thing is that I just want to say with all of that, and that's great, and you need that, they're going to need those rookies at some point. They're going to need them big time. We know one through injury, maybe. But two, I think they're going to need them because same thing we talked about last year with the Packers. They need guys that can make plays. It can't be always Aaron Rodgers' 11-play drive. You know, he was 7-for-7 seven seven and picked the defense apart. They need a guy every now and then that can catch a slant route and run for 70 yards and a touchdown. They don't have that. Not even Devontae Adams was really that. He might have caught a lot of 20 and 30-yard passes and then, hey, we ran this route a lot during the game. Now let's fake that route and go deep. You know, he's that kind of guy, and that's that's fine. But at some point, they're going to need these guys to show up. And I hopefully he's just, you know, working them along, being patient, but I think he's going to rely on these veteran guys who, you know, know where they're supposed to be more than not uh, early on in the year. I was just looking at the Packers schedule. Yeah. There's a lot of W's on that schedule. No I doubt. They do have a favorable. on the NFC North later in the program. Right. And, and look, NFC East and AFC East are the divisions that every team in the NFC North play this year. And even though the Packers finish first place, so they pick up games like the Rams and the Titans and and yeah the uh, Titans know, other is their first seventeen place game right 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 the, 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 you look look at that and it, it, it gets a little soft there uh, week five six seven before a Sunday night football 
meeting with the Bills in Buffalo. But there's there's some W's floating around. You're they got right. an NBC game week two against the Bears. That should be a win given where the Bears are right now. So uh, they, 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 you know, it's easy to think that they're going to take a step back, but. I, yeah, I the schedule, schedule is when I see another double digit win season easily. Yeah, I, I think it's double digits too. I, I do for sure. And you look at that schedule again. I think you look at just those first four weeks. Well, we go. There's no doubt they're going to be the better team on the field the first two weeks of the year. We know, hey, it's football and things happen, and we'll see how it goes. But just as we sit here, nobody's going to disagree that the Packers aren't better than the Vikings. Packers aren't better than the Chicago Bears. Hey, then it's the Bucks week three. And then the Patriots in week four, and they got them at home. And I don't know if the Patriots will be the same. But if they can get through that stretch three and one, to your point, then you look at it again and you go, well, the next three games, they're definitely the better team on the field again. The Giants, the Jets, you know, the Commanders. Yeah, so they, there's a very real possibility, to your point, they, be, they could be going Buffalo, NBC, week eight, and they're six and one going into town there. And we'll see where it goes. But, yeah, this is a, it is favorable for them this year. There's no question. It jumped out to me, Mike, when I was evaluating it. I think it'll be 5-2. and two. You five. know why. Oh, because I... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.